Hello YouTube, Wes here checking in with my November vinyl inbox. These are the new uh, vinyl records I found in the month of November. Uh, got a couple of announcements, things to talk about, things to dis discuss. Before we get started with showing the vinyl, first thing here, I wanted to come in on the COPPA thing, COPPA, whatever you want to call it. Uh, a lot of people have been weighing in on this, a lot of people are freaked out. Um, I'm not freaked out at all. Nothing's going to change here. I have marked my channel as for adults. Uh, you know, that's the main audience here is for adults, 13 and up kind of thing. Um, if there happens to be someone who is under 13 that's watching, I'm sorry if this affects you in any way. Um, hopefully you're close to being 13 since you have an interest in vinyl and you will be... Uh, you will be reaching the age of 13 soon and this won't affect you. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what I've decided to do. Just mark this channel as for adults and uh, I don't make any, I don't make any content that's targeted towards children and that anyone could misconstrue as being targeted at, at children. So I'm not really worried about the whole COPPA thing at all. It doesn't, I don't think it affects me and it's, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I think, I think everybody can just calm down. It's gonna be okay. Wanted to also uh, remind you all about the uh, documentary Jingle Bell Rocks. Here is the DVD of it. It's a documentary about people who collect Christmas music and mainly on vinyl. So it's a really good documentary. I do highly recommend it. It is something I have watched for the past two Christmases now as part of my Christmas movie watch list kind of thing. I uh, really enjoy the documentary. It's a fun one. Watched it on Amazon Prime for the past couple years. I believe it's still on Amazon Prime, but I did notice it's also on Hulu this year. So if you uh, don't have Amazon Prime and you happen to have Hulu, um, definitely recommend checking out the documentary Jingle Bell Rocks. Uh, really great documentary, really fun, and a good one to watch during the holiday season. And I got this, purchased this DVD this past year, so I'm really looking forward to. Uh, watching this on DVD this year and there's some special features on here which are will be new to me even though I've seen the movie twice now um, so yeah just just a reminder that that's out there and uh, it'll be a fun watch during the holiday season if you're looking for something to check out so I recommend that um, also wanted to sort of shout out two channels here they recently had some subscriber contests in the past month I wanted to enter those contests but just wasn't able to make it happen stuff going on in November just kept me from really being able to make videos so uh, sort of had some content on my computer that I was able to upload and keep keep some new content coming to you in November but I really didn't do much filming so I wasn't able to enter the contests uh, but the two channels I wanted to shout out are Emma over at 8 Vinyl Low. She's got a really great channel. She just cel celebrated 500 subscribers, had a big contest for it. And, uh, Emma's channel mainly deals with uh, power pop and uh, blues rock is her, her two main interests. And she's got a really great channel and I do recommend checking her out. I will put a, I'll put a link to her channel in the show notes below. And the other channel I wanted to shout out is Shed over at Vinyl New Wave. Um, as the as the title suggests, he talks about new waves. So I got a really great new wave collection, really knowledgeable on the subject. So if you're if you're into into 80s and uh, new wave type music, definitely check out Shad's channel. A uh, great channel, and really in, and enjoying watching his channel and seeing his collection and learning about uh, the music he's collecting. And uh, yeah, great channel. He just uh, he just uh, celebrated. Uh, his 100 subscribers mark and had a contest as well as i said wanted to enter both of these contests just wasn't able to make it happen but well wanted to wanted to shout out those two channels and give you something new to check out if you are interested if you haven't checked them out before so links to those channels will be down below in the show notes you can uh, check those out after you're done watching this video okay so as the title suggests uh got a new uh a new Beatles find here, and it's a pretty rare one here. This is well, Ringo. This is Ringo, our new cat, and uh, that name was actually given to him by his foster parent. So uh, I, I thought it was fitting, and uh, yeah, we, we've been looking to get a cat, and uh, so this is this is Ringo. He's about five months, and uh, not too happy about being held right now. So I'm gonna let him let him down, but just wanted to. Uh, Say bye, Ringo. Bye-bye. 
So yeah, Ringo is the new member of the family. And I, we just happened to be going to Trader Joe's one evening and uh, saw that the Humane Society was set up at, at PetSmart, which is next door to Trader Joe's here in Gainesville. Went into PetSmart, started looking at the kitties and uh, yeah, just, just fell in love with Ringo and uh, he came home with us. So that was that was pretty exciting. And uh, yeah, I thought it was I thought it was pretty cool that his name was Ringo and it, it just works. So that's uh, that's our one of a kind Beatles find. So that's what the uh, the title alludes to. So uh, maybe you'll be seeing more of Ringo on the channel as he gets more accustomed to uh, hanging out around here, around the uh, around the record studio here. Uh, so, yeah. Let's go ahead and get into the vinyl finds for the month. I've rambled on long enough about other things. I know what you're here for to see the vinyl. So let's go ahead and get into it. This first piece of vinyl here I have is a new release for the month of October. Uh, this is the new album by the artist Beck. And this one's titled Hyperspace. Just released in, in uh, November. I think I might have said October by mistake. Uh, yeah, so this is a really cool thing. I, I knew about this beforehand. Uh, my very first car was a 1983 Toyota Celica, which that's either an 82 or an 83 Celica right there. Uh, my second car was an 84 Celica. I, uh, I currently have a 1985 Toyota Supra, which is the Celica with a different uh, nose on the front of it to accommodate a six cylinder, inline six cylinder engine. Um, so yeah, I'm very familiar with this this uh, body style of car. So when I saw the cover of this album, I was like, totally like, yeah, I got to get that. I got to get that. And we were at uh, we were at Barnes and Noble. I went there for the Criterion sale to buy some movies and saw that they had this, and it was a Barnes and Noble exclusive pressing. Um, so yeah, I got the new album by Beck. Here is the gatefold. And that is what the dashboard looks like inside the, uh, the Celicas and Supras. The Supra gets a little bit more nicer trim on it, but this isn't a car channel, so that's not important to you. But that's the, that is the dashboard from the car that's on the cover there. And then we have some liner notes here, and you can see the, the back of the car there and uh, in the background, and then some lyrics on it as well and this being the barnes and noble exclusive it is on a beautiful red vinyl bright red vinyl uh, really pretty and that's the that's what the speedometer looks like in the 82 and 83 cars they had this they still had the 85 mile an hour speedometers uh, when the national speed limit was reduced to 55. Um, but yeah, this is pressed at Palos. I think the last couple of Beck albums I've gotten have been pressed at Palos, so that's that's nice. Uh, really nice pressing, really nice sounding album. Uh, very, very electronic. Uh, it is this album. He did work with Pharrell on this album, and it's I'm not a fan of Pharrell's music or production, so it, it it's it's good, but it has some when it starts sounding kind of like Pharrell, I don't like it as much, but yeah, overall I enjoy this album and it's, it's a cool album. Very much um, experimental. I like that Beck is just willing to just do what he wants to do and not trying to chase a, chase a big hit or anything, just having fun doing what he makes, making the music that he wants to make. So yeah, really dug this and uh, that was my, that's the first thing I have to show you from my November uh, vinyl finds. Next thing I got here was from uh, Jacksonville. The uh, the Urban Outfitters in Jacksonville went through their clearance bin, as I like to do, as I said in the past here, and I found the new album from a Tyco in their clearance bin. This is from 2019. This is the album Weather by Tyco. So that was a really, really nice find. I was glad to find that in the clearance bin. Um, Tycho is a, an ambient um, EDM musician, I guess is the best way to put it. There's the insert or the uh, inner sleeve. 
And then this is an Urban Outfitters limited edition, and it is also on red vinyl. Uh, very similar colored red vinyl. There's that, but this is pressed at uh, GZ in the Czech Republic. Let's see, that's the new album from Tycho. Um, yeah, picked up in the clearance bin of Urban Outfitters, so that was that was nice. Get a nice discount on that. Uh, the next thing was a pre-order. This is a Target exclusive. Which lots, lots of exclusives this month. Uh, yeah, I listened to this album digitally when it came out. Been listening to it all summer, pretty much. Really enjoyable pop album. Um, and that's the new album from Taylor Swift titled Lover. Uh, as I said, released digitally and on CD earlier this year. Did not come out in, on vinyl until early November, I believe, is when this was uh, finally released. Uh, really nice two LP set here. As I said, this is a Target exclusive. There's the gatefold, nice gatefold on this. Uh, two different color pressings on this. I'll show you one of the inner sleeves as well. Uh, do get inner sleeve with some lyrics on it. And it does contain a download code as well for the album. The first LP is pressed on pink vinyl. Really matches, matches the cover art pretty well. Uh, these are pressed at GZ Vinyl as well in the Czech Republic and mastered by Ryan K. Smith at Sterling Sound. Sounds really, really good. This album, I'm, you know, as I said, I've been listening to it digitally for the past three or four months. Um, it sounds way better on vinyl. Definitely, definitely has a lot more, a lot more emphasis, uh, a lot more, I don't know what you would call it. Definitely, it just sounds better on vinyl. I definitely appreciated that. And then the other inner sleeve has the rest of the lyrics on it. And then one more photo, which is nice. And the second LP itself, a nice blue, baby blue, kind of translucent vinyl. So the two colors go pretty well, matching with the uh, with the cover art. So that's really nice. They did, they put, they put some thought into that. Uh, so yeah, that's Taylor Swift's new album. My first time buying a Taylor Swift album on vinyl. Um, yeah, I dug this album. I think it's a really good album. It's, it's solid. A lot of good songs on here. It's got a good theme to it. You know, good, con good cohesive kind of theme to it. And uh, yeah, really good album from her. So yeah, that's Taylor Swift. Love her. All right, next up, moving on to something that's nothing at all like Taylor Swift, uh, another artist that released a new album in the month of November, and that is DJ Shadow with his new album titled Our Pathetic Age. Really, really cool new album by DJ Shadow. Uh, there are four different colors for the cover, color combinations. So this is the uh, red and yellow version. Nice two LP set. The first LP is all uh, instrumental tra tracks, and the second LP is you know, has lyrics. They're most they're hip hop type tracks. The album deals with the theme is supposed to be like like a you know we're all stuck in our screens kind of thing and not paying attention to the world around us and that kind of thing. It I think the theme maybe doesn't really work that well just because he's working with a lot of different artists on here and a lot of the tracks are you know half the tracks are instrumental tracks uh, but the the album artwork is pretty nice i'll go ahead and show you the gatefold is really cool on this that's a pretty good uh, representation of our our current times right now uh, yeah i thought that was that was that was pretty uh shocking when i opened that up to see that that was that was pretty cool i enjoyed that i appreciated it i should say and this yeah this sort of further does it they're uh taking a selfie with a, you know atomic bomb and drones go in in the background there and yeah that's that's a pretty pretty bold statement there i like that and i bought this at my local record store i don't know if there were ever colored versions of this or anything uh, but this just happens to be on black vinyl, custom labels there, and this is pressed, unfortunately pressed at Rainbow Records, which 
Not a great pressing plant, one of the worst, but it's it's a decent pressing. You know, it, it is what it is, but it's not it's not the best as far as pressing quality. But the packaging otherwise is great. It has this nice nice heavy jacket. It's got this that sort of rubberized, texturized kind of feel to it. Uh, it's got this awesome awesome book, which I'll show you here. Uh, there's the there's the second inner sleeve with uh, Shadow himself there. And then there's this art book that comes along with the album, or goes along with the album, I should say. So different, well, there's you know photographs and artistic works that sort of represent what the album's about. Uh, really, really nice, really nicely, nice addition to the album. Another interesting thing is this, uh, this album is produced by Nas, which is kind of cool. Uh, you got tracks on here with uh, uh, De La Soul, Inspector Deck, um, Run the Jewels. They did another uh, album with or another track with Run the Jewels since the last one was pretty pretty big. A lot of sort of un lesser known artists. I actually like the lesser known artists better than I liked the you know the bigger named artists that are on here. I thought some of them were really really good. Um, I can't think of small colleges featuring Wiki and Paul Banks. I like that one a lot. Um, what else is uh, urgent, important, please read? I think that was another one that I liked on here as well. The instrumental L LP, uh, the first LP, the instrumental one, he's definitely continuing on into more of an, an EDM kind of sound. Uh, but still being hip hop, still being sample based, but definitely getting into more EDM kind of kind of tracks. Uh, yeah, really, really cool album, and that's the new one by DJ Shadow. Definitely was glad to pick that one up. Uh, next thing I have to share with you is the uh, latest essential album from Vinyl Me Please, and that is the Queens of the Stone Age Songs of the Death reissue, or Songs Songs for the Death reissue, I should say. They did a really, really nice job on this one. Uh, really sort of nice embossed cover. Really, really nice, nicely done there. There is the gate fold. And then you get an insert with some, some artwork on it, some liner notes. And then the art print that comes with each, each uh, Vinyl Me Please issue uh, is just sort of this icon, I guess you would call it. It doesn't really have an artist's name or anything on it, just uh, sort of a, an icon from the album. And then since this is a Vinyl Me Please uh, release, it is on colored vinyl. It's sort of a smoky, blood red kind of vinyl. Can't see it there. Um, and the lacquers for this were cut by Chris Bellman and it's pressed at Palas, so it sounds really, really good. Uh, yeah, really great sounding pressing on this. Uh, was sort of my new, this was my sort of introduction to Queens of the Stone Age. I know I've seen them a lot in the vinyl community and hadn't really taken the time to listen to them before. And, you know, this isn't really typically something I would buy on my own, but I did appreciate it. Uh, there are some tracks on here where it's just, I don't really care for them at all. That Definitely when it gets more screamy, I don't really care for it. But uh, there's there's some great songs on here as well. I really enjoyed it. I did notice, I think God is in the radio. I did recognize that song. I think I definitely heard that song before. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's good. I'm glad I got to hear this. I enjoyed it. I definitely will listen to this again. So yeah, it was a, that was a nice thing to... Uh, get from Vinyl Me Please for the month. All right, moving on. These next two are from the second and Charles in Jacksonville when we were there. So always stop in there. Uh, first thing I got here is a piece of new wave synth pop from the group Dial M. I believe this is their self-titled album, 1983. Uh, don't know much about this group. This was definitely a more more of an obscure kind of synth pop group. 
I don't know if they even had any more albums than just this one, but it was cool to cool to find this. It was a couple bucks. It was cool to pick it up and listen to it and hear it. Uh, not anything I would say seek it, to seek out. It's not a lost classic or anything. Uh, just a good, good, nice synth pop album and uh, yeah. Dial M. And then the other thing I picked up while I was there is the soundtrack to the movie Legal Eagles. Um, yeah, I just my mom took me to this movie when I was pretty young and I it gave me nightmares. The whole fire dance scene in here, I just I don't know for some reason this movie gave me nightmares. So it's always sort of stuck with me. So when I saw the soundtrack to this, I had to pick it up. It's Elmer Bernstein who does the compositions on here. It's mainly instrumental. Um, it does have the put out the fire uh, track that Daryl Hannah, Hannah did that she that plays while she's doing the fire dance, which is a pretty cool sort of 80s uh, kind of art pop kind of piece. So that's that's a cool thing to listen to on here. Um, and you got like Good Lovin' by the Rascals is on here and Magic Carpet Ride from Steppenwolf. So a couple of, couple of tr you know, traditional music soundtrack kind of tracks and then the score and then that, the, as I said, the put out the fire sort of um, art pop piece that goes along with the fire dance that she does in the movie. Yeah, just a fun soundtrack for a couple bucks. I thought, yeah, I want to pick that up and have that in my collection. So I grabbed that. Uh, this next short stack is from the uh, it's from the Humane Society thrift store, which uh, yeah, so that's where that's where Ringo came from, and that's uh, I'm I'm often in their thrift store checking things out, and I had a really killer find when I was there, and we'll get to that in a minute here. Uh, other things I purchased while I was there, this is a KTEL release called The Beat, sounds sound wave of the '80s, so you got you know a lot of a lot of new wave type stuff on here, Flock of Seagulls, uh, Bow Wow Wow, Duran Duran, Split Ends, you know, Thompson Twins, Depeche Mode, OMD, Billy Idol, some other other ones on here. Just a, just a nice little KTEL comp. So I think uh, they're 50 cents, uh, the records there are 50 cents, so 50 cents for that. Picked up a Dennis Brown album, this one's titled Love Is, or Love Has Found Its Way. Uh, Dennis Brown is a reggae artist. Have not had the chance to spin this and listen to it yet. Uh, this one's from 1982 is the year on this on AM Records. Uh, so pick that up. And this next one is just one of those killer thrift store finds. Really, really awesome album. Uh, really valuable album. Really, really clean copy. It just like, it's just one of those things. Uh, yeah. The Shadows of Night with their album Gloria. This thing is just, it's primo. I don't know what it was doing there. It was there all sort of all by itself. There was nothing else sort of that matched with this, I would say. Uh, but yeah, just a killer, killer find on this. Uh, so yeah, that was that was definitely a nice visit to the, uh, the uh, Humane Society thrift store. So I was glad to pick that one up. All right, and then this last stack here comes from the, the Humane Society thrift store in Ocala. Uh, we were, as I said, we were down there to go to the Barnes and Noble, hit up some thrift stores while we were down, other thrift stores while we were down there as well, and only picked up vinyl at one thrift store. Uh, so these are from the uh, Ocala Humane Society, which their vinyl pricing is kind of weird there. It's a dollar twenty-five each. Uh, but if you buy three, you get three free. So I had to, I ended up buying 12. So I bought six at $1.25 each and then the other six were free, which is kind of how that worked out. Uh, so this first one here is a country Christmas compilation titled Tennessee Christmas. So you got uh, Reba McIntyre, John Schneider, Loretta Lynn, Ray Stevens, Jimmy Buffett, Oak Ridge Boys, Barbara Mandrell. Uh, so yeah, that's Tennessee Christmas. Christmas music compilation. I'm always, you know, when it gets to be November, December, I'm kind of more in the mood to look for Christmas music. So I tend to pick this kind of stuff up, pick up a few thing, few new things each year to add to the collection. So we got that. Uh, this next one, I was kind of surprised I didn't already have in the collection because it's kind of a common one, but this one is really nice, really clean, still in shrink wrap. Um, it's the uh, Rudolph the Red Nose sound, Red Nose Reindeer soundtrack uh, by Burl Ives, or you know, featuring the voice of Burl Ives and Johnny Mathis. 
Uh, so yeah, just a really nice clean copy of that. So pick that one up. And then this next one is kind of a, what you call a split a split LP. Uh, you got uh, Nat King Cole and Fred Waring in the Pennsylvanians, kind of a Columbia special products or capital special products kind of thing. Yeah, just a mixture of uh, Nat King Cole Christmas music and Fred Waring in the Pennsylvanians Christmas music. Next one was kind of a neat find and the curiosity got the best of me, so I went ahead and picked it up. This is Jerry Reed Live Hot Stuff. Featuring hot stuff. So I don't think I've picked up a Jerry Reed album before, but I'll give that one a shot. Uh, this next one here, an album from Loretta Lynn, uh, titled I Remember Patsy. Nice Loretta Lynn album there. Uh, this next one is an album I already have, but I don't have a promotional copy of it, and this, this promo copy is kind of interesting. I'll get to that in a minute here. Uh, but this is Mike Oldfield's Tubular Bells, and as it says, promo copy. Uh, Dear Programmer, little LP with spiraled selections enclosed. So, yeah, I pulled this out, you know, open it up. Looked at the, uh, you know, Tubular Bells LP, and it's on the two versions label there pretty normal there nothing nothing fancy it doesn't even say promotional copy or anything on the label but also inside of here it comes with this little seven inch with excerpts from the album um, so yeah it's got like i guess a way for the the uh you know this is probably for like uh a radio station to check out and they kind of made this like little sampler of the album for them to put on when they sent the album along with it so it's kind of weird but I guess maybe this would entice them to to sample it since they could just sort of put it on uh, yeah I don't know what I don't know what the thought was behind it I thought but I thought it was an interesting enough piece to pick up uh, so yeah promo copy of Mike Oldfield's tubular bells and that's that's not the end of the tubular bells find for this thrift store. Uh, next one I got here is this is Tanya Tucker's What's Your What's Your Mama's Name? I believe this is Tanya Tucker's second album from 1973. Really cool. You like it's picking up Tanya Tucker? Uh, this next one, you said I said we weren't done with, tu with tubular bells. This is the orchestral tubular bells performed by the Royal Film Philharmonic Orchestra, so an orchestral version of Tubular Bells. Should be, that should be a neat listen. Uh, this was a neat folk pickup. Uh, Lucy and Carly Simon, this is the Simon Sisters Sing for Children, music by Lucy Simon. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty interesting. I didn't know that uh, Carly had a sister and that she uh, did music. So yeah, that's that's that was a pretty cool find and I was glad to Glad I found that, so that's a nice folk pickup there. I uh, got a release here from Johnny Cash. This is Johnny Cash, The Johnny Cash Show. I guess something from a show he did, TV show. Picked up a uh, Deutsche Gramophone. Pick these up sometimes when I find something that looks interesting. This is Beethoven's Symphonies number no. 8 and 9. And it's a, since it's a 2LP set, it's a gatefold, and you don't often see Deutsche Gramophone gatefolds. That's a pretty rare thing. I thought that was pretty neat. Um, I don't remember if this is... Now, this is a standard later label uh, Deutsche Gramophone. But yeah, that was, a, that was a neat find. Glad to have picked that up. And then the last thing I have to share with you for November, thanks for sticking around this long. This is Escovel and his orchestra, Strings of Flame. This has got one of those iconic album covers, and I just thought it was cool, and I want to hear this. So, yeah, I had to pick that up. Really nice condition on that. Um, so, yeah, that's going to do it for my November vinyl finds. Hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around this long. Uh, got 
a bunch more videos coming for you in the rest of the month. Got some got some cool things planned out in the coming months. So I hope you'll stay tuned. I uh, hope you'll subscribe if you aren't already. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, great night, and we'll see you again real soon. Remember, there's no bad music, only music you don't like. Cheers. Uh, Emma's channel is mainly dealing with Ringo. You're making this really difficult.